Let's see Apostle Paul, excuse me, the Apostle Paul speaking. And for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat this in my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Okay, would you pass out the cracker, Lord? <coughs> we'll just wait until we've all been served. Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people, come and dine to the master. To the master, call it now, come and dine. Come and dine, master, call it, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry call it now, come and dine. The uh, <clears throat> cracker we're going to take is not Jesus' body, like some religions would tell you. It is only a cracker. But it represents something. There are there are religious folks that think that when you <laughs> read the scripture and you pray, that this actually becomes part of Christ's body. It's not, friends. It is a cracker. But what is more important? What is more important than that this cracker turning into Christ's body is the belief that Christ died for us. That concept is a lot more important than this cracker being part of Christ's body. So with that in mind, we take this cracker and remember, remember, this is the key. We remember that Jesus died for our sins. He died for our sins. He didn't die that we could have a cracker that was part of his body. He died for our sins, and the cracker only represents, only represents what Christ has already done. Let us partake. I know I've told you before, but I, I think it's worth reminding. This is not scriptural. This is just something that Joe Thomason does. But what I do, when I take the cracker, I chew it all over my mouth. Rather than just on the right, or on the left, or in the front, or in the back, I take that cracker, and then I chew it, and get it going all the way around my mouth. Because to me, to Joe Thomason, this is not scriptural now, but I'm just telling you, to Joe Thomason, that's putting that over my whole body. Now when we when we take the liquid, I'll wash that all over my whole mouth. mouth, mouth. I'll not just drink it down. Wash it all the way around. Just like it's washing, cleansing your whole body. Crazy, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not scriptural. <laughs> But I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Do it anyway. Try it. Try it one time. You don't have to do it a second time, but try one. <laughs> In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant. In my blood. This is this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And this is the key. Till he comes. That is the great hope that we have that I, I do not, honestly, I do not know how, well, you've, you've been to funerals. You've been to a funeral of a Christian. There are tears. There are tears of sorrow that that person that you played golf with, that you had Saturday morning breakfast with, that you worked with, that was your brother, your uncle, Maybe your mother or father, maybe your child. You are sorrowful that that person will not play baseball with you or go to the ball game on Monday like he had or she had for so many, many years. You're sorrowful for that. But you're not sorrowful for the death because you know that that person is now in heaven. But woe is the the funeral that you go to where there is great mourn, mourning because that person was not a Christian. And I'm sure everybody in this room has been to at least one of those funerals and they are a pitiful sight to see where there is no hope. But we have hope. That's the difference between a Christian and a pagan. We have hope. We have something to believe in. Yes. Something that we know through our faith will happen. That one day we will have eternal life, not eternal damnation. Amen. Okay. She's got him. Okay, you want to pass them out? Command on the master calleth command on. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He will fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, command on. I'm going to take this. This is not scriptural. This is only Joe Thomas. Okay. <laughs> but I, I recommend that you try it at least once, and then you can say, he is stupid. <laughs> he, he, he's confirmed to me. He is crazy. <laughs> but, but anyway, I recommend to you that you take it, chew it all over your mouth, all around, you know, before you swallow it. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for the fruit of the vine, dear Lord, that you have given to us as a symbol of the blood that you shed for our healing. Thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity once again to take this symbol of what you've done for us, that we might be healed, that our afflictions might be healed, that our children might be healed of whatever nature, dear Lord, that our loved ones might be healed. Oh, God, you've, your son has given so much for us. Now all we're doing is just recognizing that. We're praising you, Jesus, for sacrificing your blood for our healing. Now we're going to take of this, this grape, dear Lord. And we know, dear Lord, this is just a grape. But we're remembering. We're remembering through taking this grape that you sacrificed your whole body and your blood, dear Lord, for our healing. The stripes that you took in the beating before the crucifixion was for our healing. Now we take, partake, dear Lord, and thank you for this opportunity that you give us, that we might use this symbol. Thank you, dear Lord. We ask these in Christ's name. Now we partake. Thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us once again as Christians to gather together to praise your name, to, to be with fellow Christians, to enjoy the love and fellowship of fellow Christians, dear Lord. Sometimes, dear Lord, we know that fellow Christians are even stronger than our blood relatives. 
Thank you, dear Lord, for the everyone in this room. Now we ask that you bless each one in this room and those that couldn't come, like, like Bob Hale, and those that should come but weren't able to for whatever reason, be with them. We know that 2017 is a fresh start. We want healing, dear Lord. We want improvement in whatever nature, dear Lord, that are on our hearts right now of our loved ones. Thank you for each member that's here, dear Father. Go with them, dear Lord, as only you can. Give them the strength, the encouragement, whatever it takes, dear Lord, that they might be that childlike person that you want them to be, that they will show Christ in everything that they do, that others that church at the various churches that are represented here, dear Lord, will have a stronger Christian in 2017 out of each one in this room than they did in 2016. Thank you for the many opportunities, the challenges, and all that you give us, and then you the wisdom and the encouragement that you in body us with, dear Lord, that we might be that person you want us to be. Thank you for all things. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Happy New say, Year, folks. Could I just say one more you, thing? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I think everybody here, with the exceptions of these new folks, which is well, nice to see. But, uh, back when we was meeting at Barbara and Corky's and with the home groups, Years and years, seems like it's been a long time. We requested prayer for our grandson, Evan, which I'm <coughs> sure everybody remembers. Yeah, remember. And he's been, had problems since he was like three years old. And they put him on medications for all this, all this problems. And as he got older, it just went from one thing to another and it was bad. And they sent him away and he's been gone from home for three years different treatment centers and everything well God answered prayer and he got to come home December the 16th this yeah. a few weeks ago for good he's mm -hmm. fine good. everything's well this is his first Christmas at home for three years he hasn't been, he's been out <coughs> for the past three years at Christmas he's, hasn't been able to come home how, how so old is he? he's 16, 16. And so I just thank you. God's still in the answering business, and He still yeah. answers prayer. And that's true. It's not maybe and on our timing, our timing. <laughs> but it's His timing is perfect. So I just thank you, and He's doing well. And just keep praying when you think about Him, because He even when He gets out in this world, that <laughs> He's going to be faced with decisions he's going to have to make and make sure that he makes the right choices and so I just thank you for all your prayers because they they work mm -hmm. so, happy new year it's it's working I tell you uh, I don't know what we do without the Lord to take care of here's the noisemakers where, where are those two ladies at <laughs>
Yet for.